Right, cylinder blocks. So um, we've done cylinder heads and tools and all sorts around engine builds. And I just thought I'd walk you through some of the checks we do assembling a bottom end. Um, so I will peel back our Lamborghini engine cover. Uh, five liter Gallardo with the piston squirters already installed. Uh, blocks being cleaned, prepped, core plugs are back in, uh, oil gallery plugs are back in, the breather tube is in, the vent, the vent block. So I don't know whether you can see, but so that's basically crankcase breather passage. So it just allows the crankcase pressure to balance out along the block. Um, I, I have another car firing up. Uh, I have the bearings sat in just to show you how they would look installed, but also to show you uh, the oil feed. So that's the main bearing oil feed and that's the channel in the top of the main bearing. So I'll pop one out because I'll show you why in a minute. So that's what it would look like normally. And then we obviously pop the bearings in. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna measure the bearing or show you how we measure the journal and then how we measure the crank and how we then calculate after we've measured our bearings, what sort of difference we get. So uh, two things to note on these. I've had a couple of people ring me before where they've built engines and they can't get any bloody oil pressure. There's two gallery plugs, one here, one in here. And they are the main part of the main drillings, but there's also two core plugs, screwed in core plugs in here, one here, one here. Uh, we get so many people miss these out and you don't get any oil pressure, you get none at all. So if you're building one, watch out for that. Um, there's three O-ring, square O-ring style gaskets on these as opposed to the 5 litre, uh, the 5.2, which doesn't have them. So they're the water jacket uh, and oil drain back galleries. And they've just got these square O-rings. So make sure you put those on before you glue the crankcases together because they're still glued together. So what we would normally do, depending on whether we are using abraded studs, or whether we are using standard bolts. You can end up with different measurements. So a bolt will pull through its thread and a stud pulls through its nut. It will still pull through the thread, of course, but it's pulling in a different place. So if you think when a stud is screwed in, the thread in the block isn't stressed the stress, the clamping force comes from the top of the stud. Whereas if you think about a bolt, I wind that down onto the upper, uh, onto the other half of the crankcase. I wind it down and I apply the clamping load through the threads. Now the reason that's important is because if you ever move from a bolt to a stud or from a stud to a bolt, the clamping load is completely different where the clamping force is. It might be the same force applied but it will pull the block in different direction. So if we were building a bottom end on studs, we would measure on studs and we would do all the machining on studs because if I machined it or measured it on bolts and then put it together on studs, I get different measurements. Same when you're doing heads. If you're converting from head bolts to head studs, you've got to do everything with the fixtures you're gonna build the head with because it would just move it around different. We get so many people convert rods from studs to bolts and vice versa, and, and then they get problems. So one thing to bear in mind, if you're doing a conversion from bolts to studs, your clearances and your measurements will change drastically. So do check everything with the fixtures you're gonna build the engine with. So in this instance, I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna tighten everything up fully, but we're gonna set the lower crankcase on like a so, we would drop, I'll just put two in to show you. We'd put all our nuts and our bolts or our studs in and we would go around in the prescribed pattern to tighten them up. 
So we just use, we'd use a T-bar normally. Spin them all down, seat the case, and then use a torque wrench and tighten them up to the settings that you want. So normally these bolts will be to Lamborghini settings because we're just using Lamborghini fixtures. If it was the studs, then you would have to use assembly lube, which would doobly doobly do. Normally be this stuff, because we use ARP studs. Um, so you have to lubricate under the head of the bolt, down the threads, that sort of thing. So you put it together, your crankcase is now bolted up and it's torqued. You have now have a clamped up block with a main bearing journal. So you take your bore mic and you would sit it in the journal and you'd take your measurement. So your measurement is then X. And you would take your pen and you'd write that measurement down. So I'll do it on a bench, it's easier. You already know the crank, so we'll call that Y. So X, that's the biggest, X minus Y, then gives you the space left between your crank and your, the difference between your crank and your journal. Sorry, would give you the difference between your crankshaft journal on the main and your main bearing journal, journal in the crankcase. You'd be left with a difference. Then you would take your micrometer and you take your two bearings. And we use, I don't know whether you can catch the end of that, baby. We use this. So it is a little engineered ball bearing in a cap and we know the measurement, it's a five mil ball bearing. Now the reason we use that is, is because it gives us, if I lift that up mate, we should be able to get a better angle that way. So if I sit the bearing in, and I sit the back of the bearing against the flat side of the mic, the ball bearing will give us an accurate point of contact and it gives us one point of contact, which will then give us our, our bearing thickness. If I back that off, take that out, and then I won't clamp it up, I'll show you. If I try and do it here, you can see that my edges on my mic are gonna seat on my bearing before the center, so it's not gonna give me an accurate reading of my bearing thickness, so we use one of those. So then we measure our two bearings and we will add them together to call that Z. So we've got our crank case journal, our shaft journal, do it easier. Then we've got our two bearings so again, X, oh, row equals, that should be a minus, right? Minus our bearings. Leaves you a, a number, we call it Z. So that's clearance, and clearance is divided by two because we get upper and lower. That is what we're after. That is a bloody complicated way of trying to write that down. Does that make sense? I think so. Davey's nodding, so it must do. If he's got it, everyone get it. When it's written down on a piece of paper, it's easy. It's easier. You end up with your bearing clearance. That's where you want to be. We always use plastic gauge afterwards to give us an, to give us an idea that we haven't cocked the math up. Better to double check than not. So that's essentially what you do. We use a big mic to measure our crank. So we've measured out our crank on our main journals and our big end journals, we'll measure our rods in the same manner. We'll measure our crankcase in the same manner. We'll measure all our bearings and we'll simply do that sum. Big hole minus stuff that's gonna fill it, bearings and crank, equals little gap. What's the little gap? Is it what we need it to be? Now, luckily on the Lambo and our Lambo and Audi stuff, 
we can get different thickness bearings. So we have a yellow and a red, different thicknesses. Now that is initially there for workshops. Down the inside the crankcase, I've got R, G, 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 G. So if I'm building this to factory specs, it wants a red bearing, a green, a yellow, a yellow, a yellow, a yellow. That's in the lowers and in the uppers, the crankshaft's got the same numbers. So it's got yellow paint dot, yellow paint dot, yellow, there is a yellow, yellow and a red. So my two nose bearings are red and the rest are yellows. Now that's where we would start. We would start factory settings or factory numbers and we would then dry build the engine and figure out what our clearances are and if they're the same. And then we'd work from there. Luckily, we normally haven't got a machine anything. We can do it by juggling bearings. We can use two reds, we use two yellows, they do blues and they do blacks. And then we can play with the increments by changing upper and lowers. So that's what we'd normally do. Um, and that can take pff, half a day or two days, depending on how close you are. Um, you might machine your crank, polish your crank or super finish your crank, which is gonna take away material, which is gonna open up your clearance. Um, so you might have to bring your clearance back down. Um, you might have a new crank, worn crank cases or older crank cases. You might have an old crank and new crank cases. So the measurement side here is very important. What a factory bearing clearance and a bearing clearance I would want to run on say a road engine or a race engine are going to be different. And we change those values depending on the use of the engine, um, mainly the use of the engine, what we're going to do, the load we're going to see through it. Do you want a high revving engine? Is it boosted? That sort of thing. Uh, we do that on every motor we build. Nothing is fit and forget. Everything is blueprinted and everything is written down in the book of dreams. And we have data packs and data sheets for every build. So I've got a set of data sheets over there for that one. We've got all the blueprint sheets for James's here. And that's the process we go through every block. Every block arrives, whether it's new or used, the first thing we do is completely clean it and let it rest. There's no point taking out the hot wash at 60 degrees and then measuring up, no point. Leave it two days in here. It's our climate controlled room. I know what the temperature is. We can measure everything up and it's consistent. Um, so everything's cleaned, everything is measured. If we need to machine anything, it's done at that point then. I'll dry build it, do my measurements, make my adjustments. And once I'm happy at the dry build stage, it all comes back apart again and it's all cleaned again. I walk in here, yes, I'm clean, but I don't know what's been carried in or, or anything along those lines. You can see the bolts left sort of, you know, everything's clean, but you still always get a little bit of transfer. So the last stage then before final wet assembly is another clean. Um, everything is spotless and it all goes back together. So once you've measured out your bearings and you've cleared your bearings, the crank will go in, that's done. And then we would move on to gapping our rings like we've covered in the other videos. Um, but for me, the most satisfying bit of the engine build is once the crank is sat in with thrust washers, with bearings and the bottom end's crank clamped down and you could turn it over by hand. That's just like smooth as silk. Um, I have got a video I took of uh, the last motor we did actually, we'll have to put it up to Davey can tag it in, but that's the best feeling because everything you're adding there from then on is taken away, is adding friction. You drop rods and pistons in and all of a sudden you've got to turn it over against the pistons on the bores, the rings on the bores. You've then got 10 rod bearings um, and we're constantly, every time we add something in, we're constantly turning it over to keep, to con keep that feel in our heads, what it feels like. If you put something in, you've put it in wrong, or it's pinched up or done done something, you can then feel it as you turn it over. So yeah, that is it. That is a cylinder block. Um, and that is a five litre. Everything's so bloody heavy and so sharp. Um, that is a five litre Gallardo cylinder block.
clean as beep. 